Contrary to popular belief, MacBooks are absolutely positively the worst for programmers. I've been using MacBooks and you've seen my videos on this channel reviewing MacBooks and I'm afraid I'm gonna have to give it all up. And here's an article that really proves my point. Why I will never buy a Mac. When it comes to the question, Windows or Mac, opinions differ and in my opinion, so does common sense. Why I'll never have a Mac in my house by Stefan Zelfelder author PC World. It's a pretty recent article. And if it's recent, that means it's true. Everything has two sides, strength and counterforce, yin and yang. Does this harmony also apply to Windows and Mac? Certainly not. PCs are clearly superior to the overpriced designer boxes from Cupertino. Before I buy a Mac, I'd rather get an abacus and do the math myself. An abacus. And he gives seven reasons in favor of Windows and against the beautiful appearance of Apple's Macs. Now listen, I know how easy it is to get seduced by the sleek design that's minimalistic and seemingly well-built. They got the whole visionary creative sense of I'm sipping a $7 latte behind them. But let me tell you from personal experience over the last few years that I've had at Max, that the aluminum cases are actually nothing but a shiny distraction from the truth. Macs are overpriced prestige objects. Macs are always slightly more expensive than comparable Windows PCs. It's the unwritten law of nature, but you get more for it, or do you? I guess it depends on how you define more. You don't get more performance, no. My Macs have been pretty slow. Nor do you get more choice. This is true. They don't give you many options on the Apple website. In my opinion, the surcharge of a Mac mainly buys you an attitude to life and the satisfying certainty of being able to afford technology that is more expensive than it should be. Wow, I'm sick and tired of spending more and getting less myself. Maybe I'm just too old fashioned. For me, my Windows PC is a work device and not a lifestyle bonus. And it's true, I have not gotten much work done on my MacBooks over the last few years. Not as much as I've gotten done on my PC. I have my PC laptop right here. We go way back. And look, I did get seduced by the Macs, but then I realized a programmer doesn't really need fast compilation times, which is a lot of the videos I've been showing here is uh, showing off how Macs are fast and also last a long time and they're power efficient and why, who cares? Most of the time as a programmer, I'm writing code. I'm typing it out on my keyboard. That doesn't require to be fast. And also I'm thinking about the code I'm gonna type. That doesn't require the computer to be fast either. You don't need anything powerful for that. Heck, you can do that on a Chromebook. Windows makes it easy for me to be productive. Groups in the taskbar. I guess I can kind of do that on a Mac. Not really. I do have something called stage manager. I never really use it. Pointless. Whoa, you didn't see my desktop. That's a mess. Let's turn that off. Snap layouts. Yeah. Um, oh, I do have that on my Mac. I can snap my layout to here, here, here. Yeah, I did have to actually get a separate app for that. It doesn't come with macOS. And Windows 11 immediately accommodates me when it comes to multitasking. Yeah, macOS doesn't allow multitasking as far as I can tell. I have to turn off programs in order to um, start up new ones usually. Hey Apple, where are you with power toys? It's true, Windows has something called power toys. Always on top, awake, color picker, command not found, crop. Now this is another download of a piece of software that you have to install to get all this stuff. Individual apps can also be controlled with selected key combinations without any problem. Batch processing of file names or image sizes is also child's play. I have to write scripts to do that on a Mac. It's true. There are also OCR functions, screen rulers, and Power Toys Run, a super practical hybrid search function. Quick access. I guess I have Spotlight Search, and there's also Alfred and Raycast. I actually made silly videos about these things in my Mac setup guides. I'll link to one of those down below, but please ignore those videos. Just don't buy a Mac. With little practice, you can use Windows as quickly and efficiently as if you had an octopus in your family tree thanks to Power Toys. And the Mac? Well, um, Stefan, you didn't finish that sentence. Where's the rest of your sentence, Stefan? Who is this Stefan anyway? Stefan Zelfelder, let's see. Oh, he writes for PC World. He's an author for PC World. Wait a minute, he's an author for Macworld? He's an author for PC World and he's also an author for Macworld. But, uh, um, I mean, the M3 chips are pretty impressive, right? But have you actually seen what goes inside of them? I forget that. Um, the, the most egregious crime that MacBooks commit, in my opinion, is the lack of a right mouse click. It's a well-known fact that us real programmers like to use the right mouse click. Why? So you can copy and paste from Stack Overflow, obviously. I mean, look at this guy right here. Look at this. Um, look at this beautiful PC laptop. It has a left click and a right click. That's what you need, MacBooks. And I'm not coming back 
until you have that. So unless you enjoy coding in a walled garden with all the flexibility of a concrete bunker, it's time to ditch the MacBook and enjoy the productivity that you're gonna get with a PC, where right clicks are fundamental human right. And the RGB lighting on your rig is brighter than the tears of joy you'll shed while compiling your code. But hey, if you wanna keep sipping your latte and staring at your own reflection while pretending to be productive, <laughs> then be my guest. Just don't come crawling back to me when your MacBook bursts into flames on April Fool's Day.